Hi, this is part one of a three-part video series on building a contacts list. This is the contacts list that we will be building. It's a list of contacts with each one having a name, a phone number, an address, and a list of favorite colors. It looks very simple, and it is, but the cool thing about this is the technologies that we will use to build it. For the database itself, we'll use PostgreSQL. And for the website, we'll use Vue.js, a JavaScript framework. To connect Vue.js to our database, we'll set up an API. The API will be served by Postgres, which is a really cool program that lets us turn our existing database into a ready-to-use RESTful API without much work. So let's get started. In my DigitalOcean control panel, I'll create a new database. So I'll click Create and then Databases. I'll go with Postgres 11. Just one node, this is all fine. Um, I'll go with Frankfurt, it's the data center that's closest to me. Uh, name the database, contacts, app, db, and create it. Great, so while it's being created, let's go over this getting started prompt. First step is create a database cluster, which we've done. Awesome. Second step is securing our database. We can limit the trusted sources that are allowed to connect to our database. So you can enter your production server's IP addresses here, your own development machine's IP address. For now, we'll skip this, but this is a really good idea to configure uh, for production databases. Here we have a few different ways to connect to our database. We can choose the public network or the private network if you're connecting from within the same data center. There's a connection string here and there's the flags, which, which is a ready to use um, Postgres command line client with all the necessary info. So here we have instructions to migrate an existing database, um, create connection pools, Choose a time for automatic updates, which are enabled by default, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. And also a link to read more about automatic backups. This will take a few minutes to be done. Okay, now our database is ready. So the first thing we're going to do is insert some data into it. Because we're building a context list app, I prepared a few fake example contacts that we can use. And these are the contacts that you can see in this example of the end result that we'll be making. In this repo on GitHub, under examples, there's a contacts.sql file. This is an export of the contacts. It has instructions to create the table and also insert the fake contacts into it. So I'll copy the link to the file itself. And in my terminal, I'll create a new directory to work in. So I'll name it contacts app and go into it. Now we'll download the SQL export. So we'll use wget and then paste in the URL to the file. Run that and you can see that the file was downloaded. Now we'll need to insert the data into our database. So I'll go back to the control panel and create a new database. We'll name it contacts. Then I'll go back to the overview page and grab the command to connect to our database. So I'll copy it, go back to my terminal, and paste it in. Now you'll notice that it says dash d default db. Now we'll change that to contacts, which is the database that we just created. Try that, and we can see that we're logged in and connected to the contacts database. So I'll quit. We're back to our shell. Now in order to import the SQL export, all we need to do is take that command we used to connect to our database and pipe in the contents of the file. The file contains commands that create the table and insert the data into it. So once I run that command, you can see that it inserted the data into our database. And we can make sure that this is the case by connecting to our database again. And if we do select from contacts, limit one, you can see it returning one of our contacts. Now that our data is in our database and everything's ready, we can set up Postgres. So I'll log out of the Postgres shell. I'll go to Postgres website and in the left sidebar, 
there is the installation category and under it binary release. So there's a link here to go to the releases page on GitHub. I'll find the latest release, scroll down and grab the link for my operating system, which is macOS. So I'll copy the link, go back to my terminal and download the archive. See the archive here, so we can extract it. And we've got our Postgres binary. We can try to run it just to make sure that everything works. And it does. Awesome. So now we have our data in our database and we've got Postgres installed. Now in order to connect Postgres to our database, we'll first create a read-only user for it to connect to our database. So we'll log in to our database again. Now before we set up any permissions, we need to understand how everything is laid down in Postgres. We've got our database contacts and a database can contain different schemas. By default, there is one called public. And in the public schema, we have a table called contacts that was created when we imported the contacts into our database. So first we'll create a role that has read only access to our contacts data. So we'll create role, we'll call it contacts read and pass it the option no login. What this means is that it's not possible to connect to our database using this user. The only way to access it is to log in as a different user and then switch into this role. So we're granted usage on our schema, which is called public to contacts read. Now this isn't necessary because by default, the public schema grants everyone access to it. But if you're using a different schema, you will need this command. Then we'll grant it select access on our table, public.contacts, so schema.table name, and then we'll specify the role name. Because we made this no login, we'll need to create a user to actually log in with. Let's create a role named Postgres. We'll specify no inherit, which means it won't inherit any permissions from any other roles. And we'll say login with the password let's say contacts, which is highly insecure, but I'm going to use this just for this tutorial. Finally, we'll grant the role contacts read to the user Postgres. Awesome. Now everything is set up in terms of permissions and login. So now we can get to configuring Postgres. So I'm going to exit out of my Postgres shell. So create a new file. I'll call it contacts config or conf it can be anything. First, we'll need to set the connection URI. So we'll say db-uri equals, and we'll go back to our control panel under overview, connection details, take the connection string and copy it back to the terminal and paste it in within quotes. Again, we'll go back, replace default db with contacts, which is our database name, and replace the do admin user with Postgres, the user that we just created and the password contacts. Now we need to specify the schema. So db schema equals public. Finally, we need to specify the role for anonymous access. So db anon role, and this will be set to contact read. Cool. I'll save the config file. Now let's see if it works. Run Postgres, pass it the config file. You can see it listening on port 3000 for the Postgres API server, and it connected to our database. To test the API, I'll use postwoman.io. So for the request details, we'll say git, and the URL will be localhost at port 3000 with a path slash contacts. Try that. And get response status 200 with all the contacts returned as JSON which is pretty cool. Let's try to get a specific contact. With the usual RESTful API, you'd expect to access the path slash contact slash one and get the contact with the ID of one. But if we try that, we can see that we get a 404 not found. This is because Postgres does things a little differently. Everything is exposed at slash contacts and any filters or parameters will need to be specified in the query string. So to get the contact with the ID of one, we'll do ID 
equals. And then for the operator, we'll go with EQ, which is equals one. If we try that, you can see that we got the contact with the ID one. Now there are a few different operators that you can use or different filters. You can do some complex queries. It doesn't have to be column names. This is all explained in the Postgres documentation. So if we go to the Postgres website and look at tables and views, there is a lot of explanation here on how to query, filter, and limit uh, the results that you're looking for. To sum up, we've created a database, imported our contacts and data into it, and we've set up Postgres with read-only access to query the data and expose it under a RESTful API. In the next video, we will build the view app that will use this API that we just created to fetch the contacts and display them on the page.